Yo, yo, welcome back. Today we are doing the SD card uh, video that I mentioned quite a while ago now. As you can see here, we have a plethora of SD cards uh, from regular SD cards to micro SD cards. Now the regular ones I use mostly for videography, photography. Um, so we're not gonna really go over those much. Uh, for the most part for cameras, uh, I'm using, like I said, you know, these, uh, SanDisk Extreme. This is a 256 gig class 10 A2 and it's a V30. So what all that means is it, we have the 128, 64, 256 gigs. That is the capacity of the SD card. That's the size and how much data it can store. Up here we have the 250 meg. That is the read speed. We have the speed class. So uh, this 10 right there that little guy you can barely see it but that 10 that is the speed class of the sd card there are different classes uh, when we got into sd cards they are class like one two and three now we're on class 10 and then we have the bus interface so that's going to be this little numerics right here this one and two that is a bus interface and then we have the memory card type so this sdx C. This is a micro SDXC for that one right there. Video speed class, which is usually this V60. Uh, but getting into micro SD cards, uh, I did some benchmark testing. Now I used the Blackmagic uh, Studio benchmark testing, which is mostly for video and video recording for read and write speeds and what you can record at. Now it's not going to be much for data, but for the most part, when I show you the benchmark testing, you can see that if it can shoot at least 1080p, then you're more than okay for doing basic data, read and write from a Flipper Zero, from the Portapack H4M, um, or even a Raspberry Pi. Now, I have my two favorites, which we'll get into here in a second, and I'll tell you why, but let's get into what I think uh, are gonna be the kind of crappier ones to stay away from. And we're gonna start out with the lowest first, and we're gonna work our right way to the top to what I think is the best. So stay tuned, please. Uh, PNY. Now, PNY used to make really good stuff. I have now had at least three of their micro SD cards go corrupt. That's from a Raspberry Pi that happened in a Ponagachi I built. One happened in my Flipper Zero, and then the other one happened in my H4 or my, my H2. I kind of stay clear from PNY as of now until they can figure their stuff out. This guy up here, this is a kind of a generic uh, card. I'm not really gonna get into it because it's just kind of the bottom of the mill. Next up is gonna be the Lexar. Uh, Lexar did okay on its benchmark. It was very close uh, to what I would consider an ideal SD card for use. I haven't had any issues with, with the Lexar, but again, it's still not my top favorite. And then SanDisk Ultra right here did really, really well. Um, but even then, it's still not my favorite. Uh, it's more than okay for uh, your porta packs, your Flipper Zeros, your Raspberry Pis. It is going to be more than enough. Just keep in mind though that the Flipper Zero I think has a max capacity of 256 gigs, but they recommend to keep it at least between 64 or lower. The max capacity on the porta pack H2 and the H4M is 32 gigs. And again, not that you need all that capacity, so I would just stay kind of at that, you know. 32 to 16 gigs even is mostly what I use. Um, but those are your, those are the mass capacities for those two main devices. I'm gonna get into a little side wind here, but the SanDisk industrial cars are my favorite. And I will tell you why. They are made for industrial use. The majority of that industrial use is gonna be for like high temps or cold temps and harsher environments. But because of that, their read and write cycles have to be across the board very, very well and outperform the other read and write cycles from your other cards, such as like the SanDisk Extreme or the SanDisk Ultras. SanDisk industry cards uh, can withstand some of the harshest environments like we just discussed, uh, extreme high to low ranges from negative 25 Celsius to 85 Celsius. So for the average, they have a read and write speed at 50 to 80 megs a second uh, with a high bit rate loop. Um, so for video, they're not the best, but again, we're talking about data. So 
this is why I choose these for the port effect HRM order flipper zero is because of the data read and writes. The main differences lies in the durability and the tolerances, error correction and lifespan. Have a um, they utilize a proprietary ECC, which is error correction code that they write their data in, and that helps to safeguard in a case of a failure and from damage. So that's why, again, I like the in industrial cars by Sandisk. So the industry cars were made for the industry from whether it's automotive, from manufacturing, transportation, military, and then healthcare. And because of that, a lot of those units, faster read and writes, and the software is continually upgrading. You need a memory card that can withstand multiple read and writes, uh, either either on a daily basis, a weekly basis, or a monthly basis. What that means for us as the Flipper Zero users and the H4M users is that we are consistently and constantly upgrading our firmware on these two devices. Like if you're like me, you're looking at the nightly almost every other day, and then you're upgrading your H4M to the latest nightly. Flipper Zero, we have momentum now, and that kind of kind of consolidated a lot of the other firmwares that we we're using. But because of that, we are consistently pulling out our SD card out of the slot, putting into a reader of sorts like that guy, and then we are upgrading our firmware, and then we are putting that SD card back into our, into our device, and then reading that back out to the device, or then if you're on the Flipper Zero or the H4M, then you're also logging a lot of the data that you're recording, whether it's audio, whether it's um, you know RF frequencies, uh, you're capturing whatever you are doing with the Flipper Zero or the H4M, you are reading and writing back and forth consistently compared to a standard SD card that just may just be mostly for writing. That's kind of why I really recommend the industrial cards is because of that alone that they are built to a higher tolerance and they can withstand a lot more usage and a lot more abuse. Um, and that's why I recommend them. Now, I'm going to bring in the next play now, Rabbit Labs SD card. I don't know who makes this SD card. Now, it performed almost identical to the SanDisk Industrial. It did better on the video quality, which, of course, you know, uh, I, I kind of figured it would um, because I'm, I'm going to guess that it might be a SanDisk beneath that paint job, but I don't know for sure. Um, if you want to look at the benchmarks on the Rabbit Labs website for this card, um, they posted it and you can see all the data that they did for that card and it's pretty impressive i like it a lot uh, this one was sent to me for free from rabbit lab so thank you guys again i greatly appreciate it these two cards are my favorite cards to use for these devices the benchmark was done uh using this uni guy right here this is a uh, sd card tf and micro sd card reader it's usb 3.0 and then it's got usb c on the other side um, so hopefully you can see that there. Uh, these run, I think like 18 bucks. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below. If you want to pick one up, that will be an affiliated link, but yeah, these are great little readers. I keep one in my pack because you can actually, if you want to, you can update your, uh, H4M with one of these and your mobile device, uh, just by, uh, downloading the, uh, firmware and then transferring it over to your SD card and putting it in there. If you were say mobile and you did not have a computer with you, which I have done several times, that kind of covers the basics of SD cards. Uh, again, it's not a lot to it. I think that if you are looking at getting into, you know, into the H4M, the Flipper Zero, um, and a lot of reviews that I've seen have issues with SD cards. Um, so, choose wisely uh, again i would stay away from pny i would stay away from the from the generic brands that have just come out so i'll put a link in the description below for both of these cars the sandus industrial car will be an affiliate link the rabbit labs you can get from their uh, website again i see a lot of comments and reviews on discord uh or even reddit about sd cards failing um so keep in mind that choose wisely and know your mass capacity of what your device can handle at. Uh, that way you are buying accordingly uh, for those devices. Also keep in mind that the uh, as of 2.1.0, the H4M can now uh, read an XFAT. So you can now have a, uh, it's still the same capacity, but XFAT is just kind of a better overall uh, formatting than 
Fat 32 was. Uh, if you don't believe me, just go do your own research on X Fat versus Fat 32. It's better. So awesome on that. And then I believe the Flipper Zero for some reason in Fat 32. I could I could be mistaken. It's been forever since I've actually looked at my SD card because a lot of my updating is done with my phone to the Flipper Zero now, uh, which is really awesome. Uh, there's a way that we can get that going for the uh, H4M. Let's do that, guys. But again, that's uh, that's pretty much all I have for you today, guys. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and, and do all that fun stuff. And I will see you guys in the next video.